Wonderful. So it's as we said, we, you know, Wednesdays are the King, online Kingdom discipleship training, and we've looked at every Wednesday to do this. We've talked about this from last year that, you know, we are not wanting to just have an event-based meeting on a Wednesday night, but Wednesdays are a time where we start to strategize, we start to disciple, we start to have fruit. Uh, Jesus talked to his disciples and they're different from his followers. But we're transforming disciples into kingdom ambassadors because when you are a disciple, you're a student, you're a pupil, but you need to graduate, right? Amen. And and you go out as an ambassador is one who's empowered representing Christ. And you see that in the book of Luke um, and, and, and studying on how Jesus released people from discipleship into apostleship, which is the word ambassadors. Um Kingdom discipleship is very different in terms of it's about Jesus saying in, in Luke 16, 16, the law and the prophets were until John, but since that time the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. We're All we're talking about is kingdom. It's about identity, who we are from the promised land. So we've done a series on abundant life and uh, from the conference we, we did a, a series talk between Pop, uh, Pops Matthew and I on uh, maturity to reflection and guarding your imagination and from that we've got this series that we want to continue start and continue um, which is growing and being successful in our promised land and hopefully most of you have have become aware of this wheel of life that we've been talking about and if you missed out on the conference it's all right but if you were there we gave you an opportunity twice to create some goals for a three six nine twelve month goals that help you uh, begin to mold a bit more over the different areas of your life, uh, what we call a more holistic life. Um, uh, if anyone was like me, and, and you, you, know, you can uh, put a one in the, in the, in the uh, chat group, if you are like me that grew up where we only talked about the spiritual, like to talk about anything else was actually taboo and not of God kind of thing. And so I grew up being taught that. And then, you know, a few of you are like that. Some of you weren't, weren't taught that. And so uh, being able to bring God into every area of my life and not see him as one part of my life has been powerful over the last decade and a bit. Understanding kingdom in that, understanding who I am in Christ. So today we're going to talk about session one on spiritual maturity. And uh, spiritual maturity, when we describe that, is about my passion journey experience with father son and holy spirit my purpose and calling in life that's what we mean by the spiritual side of our lives and um, each week we'll go through one of those so today is about in session one is about spiritual maturity and so here are the lesson outcomes you want to go through first is what would i like to achieve in my spiritual journey in the next 12 months i'd like you to take a moment to write that down you know what would i like to achieve in my spiritual journey in the next 12 months and if you want to uh, write it down in the text box, you can as well. Um, it's just a way of starting to think. Now, that we're going to go deeper into that and have uh, more specific questions from that as we, after Pops Matthew finishes uh, teaching. And uh, we're going to breakout rooms and give you opportunity and time to actually write down some stuff. This will set us up for, for an amazing 2021 because we're already sensing the Holy Spirit in this. You know, How many of you know that if we're guided by Him, He said, whoever hears my words and obeys it. Amen? So what does it mean to hear and obey? It's not just hearing and obeying words that are written, but it's also hearing and obeying words that He tells us today. Amen? That line up with His Word. Secondly, we're going to look at how can I create meaningful steps to achieve this. And thirdly, we're going to look at how do I measure and be accountable to the new commitment in my life. If any of you were like me when we used to have 31st night, I would always make a commitment or a set of commitments. And around about between the 1st to the 4th or 5th or 7th of January, I would have broken all of them. I probably got to about the end of January on some stuff, but it was never ongoing because I didn't have proper accountability and measurements. And accountability is not condemnation. It's just encouragement. But part of setting meaningful steps is around these smart area of what we call smart goals. So... We'll be talking more of that as we go along, um, but these are the lesson outcomes, and I'm really excited because, you know, I don't know about you, but for me, just looking at the spiritual, the life partner, the family, friends, money, career, leisure, um, and, and health, that's exciting. Um, and today, looking at the spiritual, and that sets the goal for everything else. So can we give a big God bless you, clap our hands, yell out, make a big noise for uh, Pops Matthew, who is amazing, um, who, you know, just 
has been working on this. He's clapping for himself as well. Hey guys, you're not clapping, so he's clapping for himself now. Clap for me. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to pass it on to him and, and I just appreciate him so much because he does such an amazing reflection and has we've seen him mature and continue to mature and he's someone you want to reflect in uh, many areas of this of this life circle so uh, our wheel of life pops matthew over to you i think i'll start with a prayer father we thank you for this uh, wonderful evening uh, morning uh, wherever we're coming from lord god lord yes we embark on this new journey on setting uh, goals to be successful in in every area of our life in, through the wheel of life. Lord, we, you, everything that we're going to talk about, you have already discussed this and presented this through your word. So all we're doing is expounding your word and we're now coming to a place where we can use your word as a foundation to be able to prosper from the promised land that we are already in. So, Lord, Holy Spirit, just guide us and give us wisdom as we share this message. Uh, and as a collectively, as a family, Lord, let us all uh, grow and be successful in the promised land with an abundant life as that you have already promised for us. Uh, in, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Right. Uh, thank you, Ruben. And uh, so, you know, we... This is a, uh, you know, before we did this, uh, Ruben has already laid the foundation uh, where he spent seven weeks talking about living in the abundant life from the promised land. So I thought that was very, very appropriate that we were coming from a place where we know how uh, we need to live an abundant life. How do we overcome uh, the giants and whatever unbelief that we have? And uh, as you know, the, is all the scripture, the foundation scripture that was John 10, 10. Uh, I have come that they may have abundant life. And that's a promise from Jesus. Right? That's a promise that he's given us. And he has not gone away. It is there. It's the enemy who's been deceiving us and, you know, uh, telling us to, uh, to live a life where otherwise, you know, that we have to struggle. We've got to fight for everything. That is not the truth. Right? So we need to get out of that. So the promised land is has endless possibilities. And that's what God has promised us. And what we covered there was, what did Jesus, uh, you know, let me just, it's blocking me. I just want to read that. So what did Jesus purchase us into with his blood? Uh, what has the promised land promised us? We covered all these things. And the third point is what I've highlighted. How do we access the abundant life in all areas of life? And this is what we're going to address in the next uh, these eight weeks going forward. And what are the obstacles that be stopping us from abundant life? We will, and this is where we're going to set the goals uh, to be able to overcome the giants and, and how do we overcome them. So this is, uh, you know, what we have covered and this is what we're going to start off uh, as a foundation uh, to this new eight weeks part. Now, uh, the eight weeks, eight part, I think you already have so, uh, seen this, most of you are aware of it. Uh, what we call the wheel of life. Uh, it's starting with spiritual, which is what we're going to cover today. How do we, you know, about life partner? How do we have relationship with the family? How do we have a relationship with friends? And about money, uh, finances and wealth creation, uh, our career or business, how do we manage that? Uh, and what are our leisure activities? Because leisure is important. God also wants us to be le have leisure. Because I understand in heaven there is so much of leisure, so much of activities, fun activities going on. So we, we need to get used to that here so that we'll be able to enjoy that when we go there in a, in a bigger space, scale. And obviously health. Health is very, very important to us. Uh, because, you know, the Bible says that even, you know, we are a temple of the Holy Ghost. So that means we need to be able to keep our body well and, uh, and, say, and healthy so that we can pursue uh, the plans that God has for each one of us, because if you're not well, then you're going, you know, your activities are going to be curtailed. You may not be in a position to fulfill your destiny. And of course, we know, you know, all of these areas, the Bible has many, many examples of successful peoples in each of these areas, uh, which I, I'll just point out a, little, a few of them. In spiritual, we know uh, that Samuel is an example. Uh, we talk, even Jesus himself is an example for us. Uh, and of course, he's the, the foundation for us. 
and obviously others, the disciples. You know, we, we see examples our disciples turn the world upside down. So that's an example of, uh, of some of the exact people. Life partners, obviously, some of the first thing that comes to me is Joseph and Mary. How, you know, Joseph was so supportive of uh, Mary when, the, you know, she was uh, told by God that she's going to expect a child uh, before conception. And Joseph, you know, even though he had planned to put it away, but when the Holy Spirit angel talked to her, talked to him, he fully supported. And we can see that he's been a, a faithful husband uh, to Mary. And so that's an example that we, we can look at. And of course, family, we, you know, again, there's so many stories there. One of them that is Hannah. You can talk about Hannah as well. Uh, friends, of course, there's no, no, you know, the one person that we know is John, Jesus, Jesus, right? So he says he is our friend. And uh, so that is uh, one of the most important uh, statements that he has made money. Of course, uh, money, there are so many personalities in the Bible. Abraham himself was very, very successful. Jacob was successful. So to me, Solomon comes to me as another uh, person. He was probably the most successful person. Uh, and and uh, so how he was able to you know do amazingly well, uh, and of course in terms of career, career we 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 have again I can even talk about Solomon I can talk about Noah I can talk about King David, uh, because he was again obedient and he followed through exactly what God wanted. He even though he wanted to build a temple, God said no. You got blood in your hands. You got to just make all the things prepare, prepare everything, make it ready. I will then let your son. Uh, Solomon to the temple. So again, it's obedience and of course, leisure. Leisure is uh, the one thing I, that comes to me is after the Israelis have taken possession of the land, they had rest. The word, the, the Bible says they had rest. So they were able to now enjoy uh, the, the, you know, the, the uh, milk and honey that was flowing in that land and have a wonderful life uh, uh, in the kingdom. And finally, of course, health. Uh, well, again, Caleb and Joshua comes to mind. Uh, even when they were 80, they went into the promised land and they battled for five years. And I like what Caleb said, even after the five years, they've taken the land. Then he said, give me my possession and I'll take over the, take the giants in, in the mountains. So, so these are some of the examples that we have. So whatever we're going to address, there are references in the Bible of people who have actually lived through those uh, each areas of life very, very successfully. So this is, uh, as what Ruben said, this is an eight weeks discipleship training. So try not to miss it. Uh, even though, yes, we have recordings. Recordings is, is good, but when you actually participate live in the breakout rooms and when you're hearing what has been shared by others, it is, you know, it's even more meaningful, it's more lively. So encourage everybody to come together and join, continue with this journey. Uh, and end of each session, there will be a three, six, nine, 12 month milestone goals. Uh, set to help each, you know, achieve, achieve the fruit that, that you God wants to put into your heart, into your life. And of course, today we're going to start with the spiritual growth as part of as part one of this meeting. So, as uh, Ruben has already put this this slide over, uh, some of the outcomes we're going to look at is what would I like to achieve in my spiritual journey in the next twelve months? How can I create a meaningful step to achieve this? How do I measure and be accountable? to this new commitment in my life. So these are some of the outcomes that, that you can expect and you can enjoy if you really participate in this with sincerity, with total commitment uh, and perseverance, because this requires some of some, some perseverance because they're looking at a 12, at least a 12 month journey for your goals. Uh, and once you've accomplished that, you can then create new goals as you go along. So be creating a habit into you where you can start reflecting on what you're accomplishing, and then you build, uh, you know, over more and more into that so that you are going to achieve a compounding effect in your life. And that's what it's all about. So some of the most important points to consider as we start this training. Number one, I think, I dis play, please pay attention to this is a very important uh, fact, the truth. Every human being on earth, I repeat, every human being on earth past, present, and future, with the exception of Abraham, uh, Adam and Eve, came from heaven. Every one of us, God actually planted us, you know, as our soul and, and our, our spirit into our mother's womb when they could, 
during Pentecost Eve. So every one of us came from heaven. Now nobody, you know, came from any other part. So everyone's so a God knew each and every one of us who we who were who were on this earth, who are on this earth, and who are going to be on this earth. And that's something that we need to be mindful. So every human being came from heaven. We all we came from heaven. That's a good point. We were already existing in heaven before we came to earth. Sadly, not everyone is going back. Not everyone is going back. That is why the enemy has prepared a place called hell to take you know those who are, do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who do not uh, accept uh, the plan of God in their life, then they are lost. Of course, God is not happy about it. You know, it, his heart breaks every time a soul is lost. So remember, every one of us all came from heaven. So in our spirit realm, the spirit already knows how heaven is, what how beautiful heaven is. But those who are lost, you know, we, we need to keep praying for them. That is why one of the reasons why we need to be spiritually mature is how to be able to bring as many as possible that God puts in our, in our, in our life back into the kingdom of heaven. And that's our goal. That's one of the mandate that Jesus has given us. So remember, next time you see somebody next to you, whether it's your spouse, your parents, your children, or any friend at workplace, we all came from heaven. And let us hope that we will pray and make our every effort to say that we can bring them back into heaven. That's our goal. So that is why the spiritual training is so important, is so fundamental to everything else that we are going to talk about. Right? God placed us here to fulfill our purpose and destiny as He planned and returned to glory. He all when He He brought us into the earth, He has already written a, a, a book for us, our a destiny, what we are to accomplish on this earth. And every plan of His is good and very, very good. Just like when He created the world on in six days, He said it was good. And finally, it's just very good. So the same thing when he wrote a book for each one of us, our lives, he said it is good. Right? So it is our responsibility to make sure that we run the race and finish the race that God has set for us. And it is so that we can, and then when we return back to heaven, to back to glory, you know, we have received, uh, you know, with such great uh, applause because we have done, run the race and finished the race God and then one of the key things allow, you know, that we, we need to remember from the Bible, that when, he, when John, when Jesus said, he talked about Elijah, he talked about John the Baptist, how great he was. But he said, we, those who are alive today, we are even greater in the kingdom of heaven. So every generation that comes into the earth, they are going to be greater uh, in the eyes of God. You know, that's amazing. Uh, so that's how much God loves us. That's what God wants us to accomplish because he says, I've given designated man, earth to mankind. So it is our responsibility now to take possession, to, to, you know, to, bring, uh, to win souls and to be able to bring them back into the kingdom. So we are his children and ambassadors. So we are here to fulfill the kingdom mandate. That is to uh, preach the gospel, uh, make disciples, so they in turn can then uh, reach out to the others with the good news and create, make disciples. Just like how Jesus taught the disciples and they, how they turned the world upside down. So that is our mandate as well. On earth, we have to deal with all areas we are covering. That is the eight areas of life we are talking about. God has provided all resources, tools and guidance through the His word. Nothing, I repeat, nothing is lack, lacking to live an abundant life. Nothing. Right? So that is how what God has already prepared. When Jesus said, I have finished the work, right? He has made everything for us, ready for us to take possession and to uh, and until his return and to live a life uh, of abundance on this earth. So why we are starting from a very positive place. We are operating from the promised land. That means Jesus has already completed everything for us to take possession till he returns. That is very clear. Jesus said, take possession until I return. 
So our role is as his children is that if so we are spiritually mature and understand God's mandate for each one of us so that we can actually go, go out there and do exactly what God has for each one of us. Each of our mandate is different. Each of our destiny is different. But in each, whatever God has placed in our heart, we need to accomplish that. We can't say we're just sitting at the cross to go to heaven. That's not God's plan. Right? Joshua, an example, some of the examples is Joshua won every battle because he obeyed God's commandment. There were two battles he lost. That's not because of him. It was not his fault. Because one was where in Jericho, one of the soldiers stole and hit some of the possessions when God said everything must be destroyed. And when they went to war with a, one of the a smaller kingdom, about they, you know, they got defeated by two, by, you know, and it was embarrassment to him. And when he inquired of the Lord, the Lord says, because one of you have hidden, you know, stolen and hidden these things. And obviously it was found out and that person and his whole family was stoned to death. And then they were able to defeat that same enemy again. So that's an example. So disobedience is not God. God wants to be. Cannot. God will not have worked with us, will not partner with us if we walk in disobedience. And the same thing with David. David won every battle he, he, because he sought God's direction. Every battle he went for, he asked God's plan, direction, and approval and plan. I think you know, overall he won about he, he had about he fought about 66 battles. 66 battles. There's a lot of battles, and that's an amazing accomplishment, 100 percent Why? Because he was so obedient to God. He had even the opportunity to kill Saul when he was fleeing from Saul when he was hiding in a cave. But he said, No, I will not do it because I will still honor him as my king. Let God make the decision, not me. That's the kind of obedience that he had. So, so that is why when we obey God, we follow his commandments. Success in our life is guaranteed because he will. He said, I will neither leave you nor forsake you because I am your father in heaven and Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. And he says the battle is our, he is the victory is ours. And God has already assigned angels around us to do the battle for him. So we need to be mindful that we are special. We all, every one of us came. We are not of this earth world. We are of the kingdom of heaven. And that's where the separation happens on earth when those who do not follow Jesus, who do not accept God, they are separated from the sheep to, and goats. So they become the goats on this earth and we are the sheep. So we need to go and talk to the priests, the goats, make sure they understand, change the identity from goats to sheep so that more can come back into the kingdom of heaven. And that's one of our responsibilities through spiritual maturity. Right? Solomon asked for wisdom and pleased God to make him the greatest uh, king and wealthiest man on earth. Yes, so, so these are some of the things that we need to understand that God is waiting for us. God is waiting for us to ask and be obedient. And he said, seek, ask, and I shall give. Seek, and I'll find. Knock, and the doors will open for you. So God is ready to do everything for us because he has sent us onto earth to accomplish his mission for us. And then we return to heaven to enjoy the fruits of our, uh, what we have done on earth. Right? The disciples turned the world upside down. Same thing. Twelve disciples changed the whole world. And today, we are, I'm, praise God, we are sitting here. We are all today you know, doing the, what the disciples have started as ambassadors to continue the mission. Continue the, you know, what God's plan is until the Lord returns. Right. Finally, we are to do likewise by trusting and obeying God's instruction. And Matthew 6.33 is so foundational, so profound. It says, you know, seek first my kingdom and its righteousness and I will add everything to you. I will add everything to you. So there's nothing that is going to be lacking in our lives as in John 10, 10, so we can and should be living in abundance. None of us as believers should be living in poverty, should be living in debts, should be living in sickness, right? We should be walking in the supernatural. And that's what God wants to do. That's what we are teaching you how to live that life. 
So why spiritual growth is crucial for growth and success? Galatians 5, 22, 33 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. No law. So what that does it mean? That means we need spiritual fruit for spiritual development. Let me repeat. We need spiritual fruit, fruit for spiritual development. And that's how we are going to become uh, true ambassadors for Jesus Christ. The second scripture I want to put up is John 15, 5. He says, I am the sprouting wine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, I repeat, as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from you, me, you are powerless. Okay, now why? That means not only we, in order to have spiritual fruit for spiritual development, we need to build a strong relationship with Jesus Christ if we really want to bear spiritual fruit which lasts for eternity. Right? He is the, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He said, I am the wine, you are my branches. So even in times of trouble, he says, you know, replace, take your, take my yoke, which is light and easy. So God, Jesus has done everything for us. So there is no reason why we should not be successful in every aspect of our life. But everything starts from the word of God. There is no substitute. And so because he, Jesus, God has sent us from heaven, through, you know, and he's put everything that we need into us through the spirit that he's given us, and the soul that is put in us. Remember the soul that when it was put into us when we were conceived is pure, full of light. There was no darkness in it. But as we grew, grew up, uh, you know, it became, you know, smothered with uh, all kinds of filthiness uh, because as we grow, we picked up all kinds of rubbish in our lives. So this is one of the reasons why we need to, as we walk in this spiritual journey, to undo all those un wrong beliefs and clear out all those things so that our soul begins to prosper. Because Jesus said, unless we renew our mind, we need to renew our mind and to, and for, in order for our soul to prosper. So he said, he said, this is why we do this 12 months exercise of systematically, progressively, we're actually clearing out all the rubbish, the dirt in us, and we're putting more and more the truth and the word of God into our lives, and the soul begins to prosper. Because the, he, the spirit is already, the moment you accept Jesus Christ, the spirit is already renewed. The spirit is already, but the soul is not renewed. So what we are doing here is to, is a journey on how to completely clean up our soul so the souls will begin to prosper. It's a journey that we got to go through to undo all the wrong things we picked up during our childhood, when, through our adulthood and so on. So why spiritual growth is crucial again? We need to set clear boundaries for ourselves. This is one of the reasons why we're doing this 12 months exercise, right? The Proverbs 25, 28 says, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Let me repeat, whoever has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. So this is why we need discipline, we need perseverance, so that we set boundaries around ourselves to protect ourselves from the wiles of the enemy and only take in, you know, this, we're talking about the Kairos moment here where we only take on the truth from God's word. And then as we set boundaries, we are now beginning to prosper, our soul prospers, and, and we are going to see the fruits of that in our, in our earthly lifestyle. The other second verse I want to put here is Galatians 5. 19 to 21, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, dissension, idolatry, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, this is what Paul is saying. As I before, 
that anyone living in that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. You might have come from heaven as a child. But if you do this, you're not going to go back. So this is one of the reasons why we need to put boundaries around us, why we need to be intentional in about growing and, and maturing in, in every aspect of life. But spiritual is most important because that's the one that's going to give us this power, the strength uh, to be able to achieve, accomplish everything else, make our lives beautiful, those the, uh, people and those in our lives more, even more beautiful. We are going to be the light. If we don't make ourselves the light, then we are going to be causing darkness into other people's lives. So it's about developing our character to be Christ-like. So the word is character. So everything we do, it's about our character, changing our character from where we are today, be where God wants us to be to, in, in, according to his plan for each one of us. Character is the one that makes a difference. That's the one that is going to uh, change your altitude so that you can increase your altitude. Let me repeat. Character is the one that's going to change your attitude to, in, to increase your altitude. If you want to grow up and wide, you need to change your attitude. You need to build your character according to the word of God. And that's what we're talking about here. We're going to teach you how to build your character according to Christ-like character so that you're going to be shining and others are going to be drawn to you because of who you are now. So this is a, it's a triangle that uh, Padre Bruce has taught us as leaders uh, some time ago. Uh, we call it the triangle. Uh, how do we lead a balanced life? So that we can be successful in every aspect that God is, uh, uh, you know, wants us to be in. So it's, you know, so it's basically you see, I got one, two, three. One is looking up. What does that mean? It's looking in, and and looking looking out. So I'm going to explain that in a, in a second. Okay. So the relationship with God is up. So we always look to God to build our relationship with Him. So we need to build constantly relationship with Him. Is number one, so that's why he's on the top of the pyramid, because we are always looking to him, because he's the author and the finisher of our, for us, he's the creator of heaven and earth and all universe. So that is why we need to look up to him and build this relationship with God. Number two, relationship with other believers, like-minded believers in Christ, who believe in Jesus Christ. That is what we call looking inwards among those believers. How do we engage? How do we build relationship with those? Like-minded people who are believers, how do we react with them? How do we fellowship with them? How do we strengthen with each other? And, and that's the in. And the, finally, the third is a relationship with the outside world. So how do we now reach out and fellowship with the people who are out of, uh, the, you know, who are not believers, non-Christians? How do we interact with them? How do we uh, engage with them? How do, what is our attitude towards them? And how do they look at us? So these are all the things that we need to look at very, very uh, as part of the looking up. So the, 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 the triangle represents, a, in order to have a balanced life, we need to always be looking up uh, to build stronger relationship with God through the Holy Spirit so that we get grow in maturity each day and every day. And in that process, we now begin to have a better relationship with our fellow uh, like-minded believers. So we become a light to them, become encouragers to them, we become influencers to them as well. And then in that process, third is how do we, we how do we react? How do other people? So we have to be seen as a light and salt in wherever we are placed by God, whether it's in workplace or whether we're, you know, our neighbors, whoever it is, when they're not believers, how do we they trust us? How do they uh, will believe us? How do they come, you know, know that what that we are. Uh, are people that they can depend upon, they can trust uh, and rely upon so that we can use that as opportunity to be able to witness to them the good news. So that, that's how, that's what we're talking about. So as a believer, in order to mature in the spiritual, in spirituality and grow in spiritual, we need to have a balanced life where we build our relationship with God. As we build our relationship with God, we're building a relationship with 
fellow believers, brothers and sisters. And at the same time, we're build, build, building a relationship, a stronger tie and better relationship with those who are non-believers so that we can draw them back into the kingdom of heaven. Now, what does this mean from a character perspective, right? So from a character perspective, I split it up into three. So character, what does it mean when you're looking, how do you build relationship with God? How do you build relationship in, from a character perspective with uh, like-minded believers? And how do you uh, look at uh, your, your uh, relationship with the outsiders? So number one, if you're looking at character up, you know, do I'm putting some examples here. You can take a picture if you want, because I won't be able to go through everything in detail because of time. So, you know, for example, do I make enough space for prayers? Do I pursue intimacy with Jesus? What is my heart for intercession? Right? Am I living the power of the Spirit? Am I seeing personal re revival growth? Do I still feel pressure? Do I still find pleasure in, in worshiping Him? Am I living in a state of peace? Am I afraid of or being nervous? Right? So because God doesn't give us put fear into us, He doesn't give us make us nervous. Am I being obedient to God's prompting? Are we sensitive to the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit telling me when I have that time with Him? Okay. And in our, our relationship with other believers, do I love the flock? How do I like love them unconditionally? Even though some of them, their character might not be what I want them to be. Right? Is trying a blessing. Is time, sorry, the type word, right? Is time a blessing or a curse? Am I resting enough? Because, you know, one of the points we talk about is leisure, health. Okay, how are my relationship with my friends? Am I experiencing intimacy in relationships with your spouses, your children, your parents, and so on? How easy is it to trust people? Can I be trust others? Am I discipling others? One of the things that Jesus talked about. Am I, is my family happy? Because if there's no peace, I told me I'm not going to have peace anywhere else. Period. Am I making myself vulnerable to others? I mean, this is not exhaustive list, but these are some of the main points that I'm, you know, we're posing, putting out there. In terms of character out, my relationship with non-Christians. Do I have a heart for the lost? Do I care for them? How often do I share my faith? Do I leave time for relationship with non-Christians? So one of the goals, you can set a goal for that as part of this today's exercise, right? How much time am I going to set to build relationship with non-Christians? Am I going to seek at least one person a week, one person a month? I'm going to spend some time with them. Just be nice with them. Just talk to them. No agenda, not preaching, but just build a relationship where they can learn to trust you. Right? Am I running a race with perseverance? Am I determining what I need to accomplish? Do I have a vision for the loss? Am I dying to success? Am I just my priorities are different? Right? Am I proud of the gospel or ashamed? There are quite a few typing errors. I need to correct that. Okay, sorry about that. Am I proud of the gospel or ashamed? Remember what Jesus said: if you deny me, I deny you to the Father. Right? So it's very strong worded. Am I a servant? Do I find it easy to recognize people of peace? Can I take risks? With people that I do, who are not Christians. Look, so these are just some examples, and this can help you with this 12 months plan, the three points, three areas that you need, you want to work with. This gives you some ideas where you feel that you may want to uh, pick up some of these points and, and work on it, where you feel strongly that these are important areas that I need to build a change or to improve. Okay, that's it. I hope that makes sense. So, so it is about balanced life. And uh, it's, as I said, in is building relationship with the Father, with God, building relationship with the black believers and building relationship with non-believers. So we need to have a balanced life in all these areas. We just can't be living a Christian life all our lives. We just want to be you know, afraid of mixing with others, just living among our people. Uh, you know, it's like chicken living among chickens and we're not going to be eagles. Because we need to have the boldness to be able to go out there and to show the world that this is the right thing that they need to, they need to know about this. And that we are not ashamed of it. Remember, every soul that you win, heaven is going to rejoice. Heaven is going to rejoice on your behalf. So how do we grow? 
The fruit of the Spirit are manifested in us as a result of the born-again Spirit. Man inside of us, which interacts with the Holy Spirit who lives inside him. So, our Spirit is born again when we receive Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes to and lives inside of us. And now we are beginning to build a relationship with the, and we're going to begin the fruit of the Spirit journey. Right? When our spirit man is open to the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit who lives in us, our life begins to change. Right? And we start bearing fruit, spiritual fruit. I, I know because, you know, the moment we accept Christ, you know, as a new Christian, we already feel something different. We want to do great things for the Lord. We are filled with overwhelm, with compassion. We, you know, we want to do so many things for the kingdom. But then again, we, we are still, you know, infants drinking milk. We are not eating solid food, so we cannot be where God wants us to be. So it's a journey. It's a journey to maturity. And this is something that, you know, it, it depends on individuals. Some never grow up the moment they accept Christ. They're just happy to be where they are. Some are intentional about growing because the more you grow, the more God can give you a revelation, the more God gives you uh, more purpose and act to do for his kingdom. So this is what Solomon said. This is what, you know, with the Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. Right? The Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. So the good news here is that as we begin to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us, to teach us as we read the word of God, meditate on the word of God, and we start uh, putting it that into action, the Holy Spirit, you know, the evil things, the unclean things in us begin to get exposed. Because the light is now driving out the darkness that is in our hope, in our souls. And it's a journey as we go through this, we begin to see more and more of this as we mature in the word of God in the, in, in the spiritual realm. So when the Holy Spirit, the Lord's light, penetrates our human spirit, the evils in us are first exposed to us. That's the first thing that comes out, the evil in us. We, we already know what is not right in our soul. So that we may be able to do something in getting rid of those evil and false beliefs. This is where we talk about, you know, Papa Luke talks about the toolbox, our identity, and even Ruben talks about, you know, the replace and, you know, replace and reset. So as we go along, we replace, we take off of these unclean things that we've gone through, experience in life, which we thought was okay for us to accept and live with. Now we are in a position to uproot it and replace it with the truth, which is the word of God. And as we do this in the process, the, you know, the, as I said earlier, our soul begins to prosper more and more. There's more joy. There's more peace. Uh, there's no more blessing that flows through as part of that because now uh, God is beginning to trust you more and more. We're becoming a better steward of what God wants us to be in every aspect of our life. It's all about stewardship at the end of the day. And when we steward it well, God is going to open his doors from heaven uh, to bless us with every, all the good things that he wants us to have. Right? So now we will start bearing spiritual fruit to the glory of God. So that's a journey that we all start. So this is nothing new that, that you don't know. But as I said, that's the source. That's how we start and that's how we build up towards where we need to be. So God's final, so God's kind of faith in us is the key to the blessing. What is received in the spirit realm by faith to our heart or spirit man will begin to manifest in the spirit, in the physical. Galatians 3.14, okay? So what I'm saying is that, so as we strengthen our faith in God, our spirit man rises, we, the whole spirit, the soul begins to prosper, and we are beginning to manifest God's promise from the supernatural into the natural. We begin to walk in the supernatural realm. We are no longer looking at what the world can offer for us, but we now begin to trust God for his blessing upon our lives. And his blessing is a blessing of life of abundance. So there's not going to be no lack in any aspect of our life. We're going to live a healthy life. We're going to have a peaceful life. We're going to be a, a blessing to those that, that, that come, in, come into our lives. Right? So spiritual fruitness is our nugget to change our world. Right? So we become spiritually fruitful when we begin to receive 
the word of God into our hearts so as to become doers of what it says in bearing the spiritual proofs. We therefore will stop being double-minded, but rather stable and steadfast in faith towards God. So that's why, you know, this, I, I, you know, Ruben and I have been talking about this. I've been doing a revision over revision over revision over this particular matter. Is what is you know what I'm presenting you today is taken hours of preparation. We've really been praying and asking the Holy Spirit to guide us through this journey because we want to make sure that you understand why spiritual maturity is so 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 crucial, critical in our life for the success of our success in every aspect of our lives, but not only for us, but we are going to be the producers of good news, good blessings, and carriers of good good gifts for everybody around us. And that's what it's all about. It's about, as I put in the triangle, how do we build a relation? As we build our relationship with God, how do we build a better relationship with those like-minded believers? And how do we build better relationship with those who are lost out there in the, in the world? That's what it's all about. And when we are balanced in that, when we're thriving in every, aspect, in every of these three areas, I promise you one thing, God will raise you up to such a level that you don't have to, you know, as you say, seek first my kingdom and his righteousness. There will be nothing lacking in your life. You will be living abundant life because you're already living in the promised land. You're already here in the promised land because Jesus has already laid the foundation. He says, I've done everything for you. It's finished. Now it's in your hands. How you want to take possession. And in order to take that possession, you must be able to walk right with God, understand his promises, understand his, what he's expecting from us for, to accomplish his purpose on this earth. And that's what it's all about. So, with that, I, I want to pass it over to Ruben now so that he can talk about a little bit more about the assignments that we're going to do. And then if there's any questions about what I presented, we can just talk about it before we go into the breakout room. So I'm just going to share my screen and um, put this up uh, before I put the questions up that Pops Matthew talked about in terms of character and the up in and out you all remember the up in and out that pops matthew was saying so just sharing now and i want you to just look at those list that list of the up that that me with god the spiritual aspect and and i know we had in and out as well but just this aspect here one two three four five six seven eight nine statements um and see if there's anything there that really jumps out at you that you feel like yeah um i maybe i need to make more space um, for prayers or maybe I need to pursue intimacy with Jesus more um, maybe I need to have uh, more of an intercession heart or uh, maybe I need to f I feel like I want to live more in the power of the spirit or um, you know am I am I seeing a personal revival growth maybe I feel like I'm dry and I want to see more uh, of that revival or growth personally in my life um, or, or maybe I need to feel more pleasure that the you know spirit holy spirit pleasure or being living in a state of peace or uh, not being as afraid or nervous or being obedient to god's prompting and is there anything that stands out and it could be one or two things that stand out and if it does um, i want you to write that down and make note of that because it'll help you with the goals that you're going to set for your spiritual side and uh, you know is there anyone that would like to just type that in or yell out or something, you know, unmute him for a second, say, this is something that just stood out for me. Um, Rubika, is there anything that stood out for you there? I'm going to just call names and then I'll get redeemed after that. I, I guess for me, uh, two things is that I'd like to see myself living more in the power of the spirit. Um, and operating in that way and also pursuing intimacy with Jesus more than I am at the moment. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And and guys, this is not a, 
uh, this is not the list that you've got to use to create your goals. It's just kind of giving you a let, let a, a moment to start working towards what's the Holy Spirit prompting you in. Um, I know Redeemer had unmuted. So Redeemer, what about for you? What was something that stood out for you? Um, the first one, actually, do I make enough space for prayers? Yeah. Um, it's more like, do I make enough space for that one-on-one? -on -one? We've yeah. got like, we've no, no other distractions. Uh, yeah, I do pray every day, but I just think I, I'm doing it like in a rush. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's like a marriage. huh? Um, I, I can be hanging around my wife all day and not spending time with her. And and so it's like that with uh, with Jesus. We can say he's always with me and I'm always with him. But maybe we haven't just hung out together. Um, and that's a really important one, guys. And so one of the things we're going to work on is our smart goals is actually setting up measurable, specific ways. And it could be like, you know, specific times to spend time with the Lord. And that doesn't mean that when we don't spend time with him, he's gone somewhere. He's always with us, but sometimes we just need to spend that time where we're just saying, yeah, not distracted by anything else. Yes, Reed. Um, Can I just share? I mean, I think I've been doing it in the past. But then I lost the habit. So what I was doing before, before COVID was like uh, once or twice, I mean, once every two weeks or once a week, I would just go in a cafe just by myself, get a coffee and just read or listen to music, and nothing else. I just felt that that time was just like having a coffee with Jesus time make sure you order two coffees and put one on the other side yeah i usually take coffee and then tea <laughs> but, but i don't know well, which one he would prefer so i just take both <laughs> you know as, as funny as that might sound that is an awesome thing to do is just a, it's a metaphor it's a symbolism just like when we take communion just like when we uh there's the symbolisms that we do when we take water baptism they're just an they're outward signs of something we're doing and that's awesome thank you for sharing that um, Ken, I noticed you are unmuted as well. What about for you? Anything that stood out here? Uh, for me, it's probably uh, pursuing intimacy with Jesus, and um, and also having that uh, that heart for for intercession. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah. Thank you. And um, so, you know, if we look at pursuing intimacy with Jesus, then we go, how do I actually pursue that? What does it look like? What's measurable in that? So these are some of the questions I want you to think about. So write down something that maybe stood out to you in this, in that my relationship with Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, so someone asked a great question the other day and said, is the, is it, is the Trinity one or is it separate? Do I talk to Father, separate to Son, separate to, to Holy Spirit? Do I, if I talk to one, do I uh, talk to all three? And both answers are right. When you talk to one, you talk to all. When you talk, but you can also talk to each one separately. Um, they have different roles, character, characteristics. And so maybe pursuing intimacy, you know, not just with Jesus, but with Father, with Son, with Holy Spirit, may be a pursuit that's interesting and, and measurable that you can start to put measurements around. Let's be clear that goal setting is not about trying to achieve something to please God. Yes, I want you to, and, and if you have not heard enough, we'll reiterate it over again because we keep saying that it's, it's based around your purpose. So if you don't achieve your goals, it doesn't mean that God's angry with you. Amen. Um, but it's just a way of growing within the promised land, having success within the promised land. So here are the questions that I want you to think about today. And I, we've put them on the group chat as well, and we've put a template down. Uh, in this and I want you to just take your time in in doing this and I'm just going to stop my share f uh, sorry my screen for a second and just put them up one at a time so that might be a little bit easier for you to see nope I didn't like it let's try that again and let's go all right so first question is, write down three things you would like to achieve in the next 12 months in your spiritual journey. And you're going to get, get an opportunity to look at these questions in the breakout rooms too. But this is the first question, and you can start doing it now. Or you can wait for the breakout room and do it there. We'll give you, you know, some time to do it there.
I'll just talk for about five, five, seven minutes and then finish. The second question is to break down each of the three things above into three, six, nine, and 12 month SMART goals. The word SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, uh, relevant, and time bound. And again, your, your, in your breakout rooms, your leaders will just remind you of that and help you through that, what that means. Because it's really important we set goals that we set them around what we call SMART goals so that we can measure them. And then here's an important one that a lot of people miss when they set goals. They don't have someone to be accountable with and to share their goals with. So can I ask you to just find someone to be accountable with and ask them to review your journey at least once a month with you. Now, let me be clear, you, you don't put a pressure on someone. Unless they're one of the leaders and leadership, we are trained to do this and we'd love to walk with you and disciple you. But if I called one of my buddies and said, hey, I'm just thinking of doing this. Like at the moment, my son and a friend of mine and I uh, have planned to go to the gym uh, three times a week for the next six months. So my son and that other buddy, Toby, we're accountability partners. We're accountable to one another. If I don't turn up, um, they're not going to try and fix me. I'm just being accountable. So don't put pressure on anyone to fix you. Unless it's the, it's the, it's the leadership, we will be more than happy to work with you through what's uh, stopping you. Otherwise, you know, at least once a month, have a catch up with someone. Say, Could I, can we just catch up? I just want to share my goals, where I've gone, where I've progressed, where I'm failing, uh, and just have a chit chat. And if, you're, if someone asks you in this group to be an accountability partner to them, don't feel the pressure that you need to fix them or have a solution or give them a good thing. And in fact, we don't want you to do that uh, unless you want to in the leadership because we've trained the leadership in certain tools to help effectively do that. And number four is not for you to do today, but for you to start thinking about is to create a, a goal to find and memorize a key scripture for each of the eight areas in the next seven days. Now, I kind of didn't write it properly. You don't have to memorize the eight scriptures over the next seven days, but over the next year, so in the next seven days, we're going to find a scripture that's relevant. So that's where the spiritual basis is for each of those eight areas. What's a spiritual scripture for, 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 for spiritual side of things in your life, for the life partner in your life, for the family, for the um, money, for the health, for the leisure, etc. And so having at least one scripture which you can use and memorize over the year because that would be really powerful for you when you are going through stuff to remember that. Like, you know, money, Deuteronomy 8, 18 jumps to mind. It is God that gives us the power to create wealth. That, that's a great reminder. Rubika has given a, a lot of testimony on how that's helped her. Um, you know, career, whatever you do, do it as diligently as you would unto Jesus. You know, so um, th there's th as find a scripture that you could help or uh, with God all things are possible, you know. So I'm going to give you an example of what I've done. Can you guys see that? Yep. Awesome. So um, you have a template like this and you can fill it out. You can print it out, fill it out by hand, or you can do what I've done and fill it out on, on some sort of a uh, PDF filler. Um, so I've written down my three overall goals. I'd like to have intimate heavenly encounters by February 2022. So it's 12 months from today. I would like to learn topics on communion and the second coming by February 2022. I would like to have conversations with each of the Godhead on a regular daily basis. So this is a deeper level than what I currently do. So then the second question is, how do I break these down into three, six, nine, 12 month SMART goals? So my first goal, I would like to have intimate heavenly encounters by February 2022. Now begs the question, how do I do that? Like, how do I actually achieve that? So what I've done is I've put myself in a position where I know, but the only way I know best right now and and so by starting somewhere, I allow God to use me, use that to talk to me and give me other methods. Make sense? Just a methodology. And so what I'm doing in my three-month milestone is saying, I'm going to spend 10 minutes a week in meditation. So a certain type of time with God and journal what I get by May 2021. So like Redeemer said about journaling, I'm going to be doing that, but I'm setting myself a smart goal. So it's specific. It's measurable. Measurable means 10 minutes a week. It's, it's uh, relevant. It's, it's, sorry, A is attainable. So it's possible to do. I can spend 10 minutes a week, put aside 10 minutes to do this. Uh, it's relevant to my goal, to my overall goal. 
and it's time bound. I want to I want to start the habit and have a habit going by May 2021. Does that make sense to everyone? It's three months. In six months, I want to move that to 20 minutes, three days a week. So by August 2021, I want to create a habit that moves it from 10 minutes once a week to three days a week, 20 minutes. And I'm just putting myself in a position that I know best. Doesn't mean that it's the best way to do it. There might be other ways, but putting myself in a position with a, with a purposeful goal that would help me achieve this idea of having heavenly encounters, whether my physical body, spirit goes there, or just my, it's my spirit or my physical body. I want to have that opportunity to see how uh, the God do that. And then over the nine months, by November 2021, so see, write down your dates, May, August, November, February. I've just increased my frequency. Make sense to everyone? So write a goal and then have a frequency that's attainable for you. Don't over try to do something that's too hard to do. Um, talked about communion. I want to learn more about communion because I believe there's some depth in communion that when we have communion together, we want to really learn and uh, and, and get deeper and uh, you know the implementers were having a chat and we're talking about how important it is and Padre Bruce is saying you know be good to learn more and I said yeah absolutely 100% um, I love some of the stuff I've heard from Joseph Prince um, so I want to le- do some bit more on it and so by 2021 I want to be able to have done some stuff around communion and, and Joseph Prince is a grace and truth preacher and so I want to uh, run after something that's that and he's been a, some, some stuff that he's mentored me in years ago so i know it's good stuff and then i want to in from august onwards uh, sorry from may onwards so this this will be something i've achieved by may and from may onwards i want to start creating a rhythm where i spend time finding out more about revelation and second coming from a grace and truth point of view because i've been taught lots of other stuff okay and so on who are my accountability partners well I, I've, I've chosen shares and redeemer for my first goals my first goal of just spending time and my third goal, which is um, having conversations because it's around just as prayer times. Um, and I've chosen uh, Ken because Ken kind of spends some time. We've had chats about Revelation and we've had chats about communion. And, and, and so, you know, I've asked him to, uh, I haven't asked him yet, but we were talking just before in prepping and saying, hey, would you be my accountability partner? And it's okay if people say no. And then I haven't done this yet, but this is a template where I'll have a scripture over the next seven days for each area of my life, okay? Hoping that's helped. Now, you'll have this in the breakout rooms as well. Are there any questions? 